Well, hello, a very good afternoon to you and welcome to Allianz Park on this slightly chilly December afternoon as the NatWest Champions Trophy final is set to take place here between Tunbridge School and Bedford School. Delighted to be joined by Sam Howard, former Blackheath, Roslyn Park and Exeter Chiefs fly half. Also a man with plenty of experience of schoolboy rugby, having coached at Dulwich College and Eltham College as well. Uh, Sam, great to have you alongside me. I know that uh, we'll get stuck into the game in a little while up in the commentary position but uh, what sort of standard of schoolboy rugby can we expect here this afternoon? An extremely high standard. Uh, Tunbridge and Bedford School traditionally year on year produce excellent first teams, always play a good brand of rugby. So I'm really excited about this final. I think this competition has gone from strength to strength over the last two or three years. You saw the semi-finals, they were outstanding. I think we're in for an absolute brilliant final. There is a great anticipation from both of these schools ahead of this final. Tunbridge delighting in being at this stage. Let's ourselves then have a look through the teams and we'll start with Tunbridge. They're unchanged in fact from the side that defeated Oakham in the semi-final. George Head continues the skippering duties from the front row. The centre combination of Devaney and Sporforth, both men who've played in the Roslyn Park School seven. Sevens the team in full then. Mott, Dainton and Head up front. Lickiadopoulos and Sinclair in the second row. Sinclair of course who uh, well, has been a fly half in his time. You may see him doing some kicking duties. Wildblood, Taylor and Petri are the back row. And then at half-backs Charlie Mullins and David Wilkinson. On the wings, Ollie Ward and Harry Rees, the centres as I mentioned, Devani and Sporforth with Suano Sarawiwa at the back and sharing the coaching duties, it's Christopher Morgan and Graham Gales. On to Bedford, well several of the side have been here before of course, defending champions as they are, influential centre Fraser Dingwall captains the side having started at fullback here last year, he's alongside Fraser Strachan who played 12 in that final, two out of the three starting front rowers also started a year ago, uh, the lineup as follows, Kane and Kerr who started uh, then Seward, second row Ted Hicks and Joe Rogers in the back row, Ollie Hind and then Connor Finch and Ryan Hussey, uh, both of whom are involved in, well Connor Finch and Ryan Hussey both involved in the Saints Academy and at halfback Jack Dalton fly half Edward Johnson and then the wings Faisal Olabuye and Ben Kite those centres Dingwall and Strachan and Alfie Orchard who will look to try and run from the back and the coach we spoke to just a moment ago is James Hinkins looking at the replacements then and these boys will look to try and influence things when they get on Prido, Hockley-Smith, Harvey, Hind, Collins, Petrosi and Pullen for Tunbridge and for Bedford, Peter Jameson, Entwistle, Harry Doniger, Matthew Fordham, Jason van der Volt, William Bowes and Elliot Wingfield. Will Bowes, who was on the bench in last year's final, and he'll be looking to make an impact from that position once again. So we're just a couple of minutes now from kickoff, and you can see there's the little drum just in your shot there, and they are getting very excited now. Bedford are the defending champions. And it's Bedford in the red who are running out. There's a calm walk from Tunbridge. They break into a stride now. The players aren't going to be allowed to get away with too much this afternoon because the man in the middle is uh, a pretty experienced customer. Refereed in the Aviva Premiership for a number of years. And he will be looking forward to this. It is, of course, Luke Pierce. Tunbridge then go through the final squeeze. We are ready to get going. As with any game of rugby, Sam Howard, what happens at the kickoff? Crucial. Yeah, it's a cliche, but both will be looking to start the game well. I would have thought Tunbridge will be looking to play a little bit more territory based game than Bedford do normally like to throw it around a little bit more. So, yeah, these first five minutes you want to get into the game. Everyone wants to try and touch the ball, and away we go. Well, Dingwall, with the restart, just settles back into his own half after making the kick. And it's sent downfield. That's a really good exit kick straight away from Tunbridge, but it's taken quickly. And it's back in for Dingwall and just couldn't quite be held by Dalton. I think from the off, we see the two contrasting styles straight away. Tunbridge get the ball, great kick, but Bedford take a quick line out and they want to get going as soon as they can just a slight error there otherwise they could have had a dangerous position there they do want to get going Bedford do love to play the rugby the atmosphere here is incredible given that we've you know only got a thousand or so people in here 
They are absolutely giving it everything, the Tunbridge fans currently. They are in possession. The boys in black and white. Starting to just try and crab around that side. The drive comes now down the near side. And it's in from Mullins. Gets it away. Mullins again. Looking to go through Wilkinson. It's a decent carry from Declan Sinclair. Away from Mullins again. Good spell of possession initially from Tunbridge, but they've just knocked the ball on there. Now then, turnover is good from Bedford. They've done well. Olabuye goes in to play scrum half, gets it up for Strachan. Dalton, Dingwall in at first receiver, wants to just try and put the pressure on by squeezing Tunbridge into the corner, but didn't quite get enough on it. And so it now comes down for Alfie Orchard. He's going to try and chip it into that corner in a similar fashion. And well, it's just stayed in field. And Orchard putting plenty of pressure on. And in fact, he forced Tunbridge to take the ball into touch. And it's worked out to be a brilliant platform for Bedford. Great work from the fullback, Orchard. Tunbridge have got to spot that and actually use the space that's out wide. Bedford have given them the outside. I think they've got to try and look to spread the ball a little bit rather than kicking to the Bedford players that are waiting at the back. Ted Hicks collects it from the line out, and now they're looking to get this driving ball going. And they're still going. Oh, they might go all the way here. Might just have been held up on the line. No, referee Pierce says the try's been scored, and it must be Ted Hicks at the bottom of it. And Bedford first on the score sheet from the catch and drive, and what an effective rolling ball it, it proved to be. Once that ball's at the back there, it's so difficult to stop legally. They do well to stay bound, doesn't come off. And goes shows great strength to get it down there. Really good organisation from Bedford there. And the conversion is good. Dingwall adds the extras. Tunbridge nil, Bedford seven. Tunbridge to try and take advantage from this penalty situation. With the line out. They're going to the back through Taylor, but it's loose. Well picked up from Wilkinson, needed to tidy that up. And then a little pick and go, could this work quite fortuitously? In the end anyway, it's a brilliant man and ball hit from Joe Rogers. Absolutely superb. Enjoying starting the final this year after he was on the bench last time round. Wilkinson again, he's done a couple of decent carries there for his side just when it was needed. Sporforth, little juggle. Tackle from Rogers didn't stick that time. Now then, Tunbridge start to flood the left-hand side. They've got more options there if they want to use it. They're still picking and going. Dylan Taylor once again. They're really choosing to do the short work. They have got acres of space on the left. On this 3G pitch, are they going to be able to ship it? Yes, they are. And the try is scored through Ollie Ward. Brilliant work from Tunbridge, sucking in that Bedford defence. And crucially... They reply, having just conceded, and that very much keeps this final alive. Yeah, as you say, once you've conceded, it's so important to get back on the score sheet. They recognise they've got the overlap. Nice miss move. The winger's not going to finish from there. Conversion effort. Well, the cheer goes up, as do the flags. What an incredible kick. Right from the touchline. Game on. Sinclair not running with quite the vigour he was a few minutes ago, possibly due to that injury he's picked up. Peter Jameson just on the floor having taken a bit of a knock. Petrosi coming down the short side. Push, Bedford! Scrum half has been busy since he's come on. Blaze Mott only knows Four. one way, straight forward from the loose head prop. Spore fourth, starting to come into this game a little bit more and that's a really good offload from him. On to Devani. Brilliant work from the outside centre. Out of your picture, Connor Finch is down. And they're still going forward here, Tunbridge. Are they going to be able to turn this pressure into points without losing the ball again? We've seen that so many times. It's a tackle now, release! They'll probably pick and go a couple more times, but One they can away. certainly put it through the hands. 
Charlie Sporforth has really come alive for them. Pierce with his eyes on it. Then there's a big carry. Oh, and it could be over. Try scored for Tunbridge, and it's the skipper George Head. Great try. No, no more than they deserve either. They carry the ball. They get numbers to the breakdown, and then their big, strong forwards bust over. Really good. Critical will it be? The feelings are raised. They get maximum points. Big questions being asked of Bedford. What can they do to come back into this one? Off his feet. It's a penalty. A penalty to the boys in red. This will be just the opportunity they wanted for Fraser Dingwall. It's just another look at the try. George Head, such a powerful run. Nothing that Dingwall could do on that occasion to stop him. But now at the other end, a chance for Dingwall to add three points for Bedford School. And it's good to hear that for all the noise we've got from both sets of fans, they are quiet to respect the kicker. It wasn't the cleanest connection, but it's effective. And it's Bedford who get themselves up to ten points. Wait. Okay, line is over. So That's they've got the ball here, Tom Bridge, good line up, but there's two Bedford players back for that box kick. I'd actually look at there's a lot of space here behind this right winger, and now they've got, they've gone. I'm great, great play. Well petrosi has got himself and now wants to try and stand up Alfie Orchard. Scrum half's done well. And the support gets there in time as well. Now they've got to make sure they don't get isolated. Good break from the scrum half. He's now back to his feet to serve his back line. Petri. <laughs> Penalty to Tunbridge. High tackle on the number eight. This is right on. Now I'd go for the corner. If I was Tunbridge. Well, it could put them out of sight, couldn't it? Yeah. They've yeah. opted to go for the sticks, so this will be one for Sinclair. I think the difference here between the Bedford opportunity, this is a much tougher kick. The Tombridge line-out's been really, really good. If they get a, a, a try, they go two scores ahead. If he bangs this over, it's still a seven-point game. Engrossing second half here at Allianz Park. Engrossing match all the way through so far. And Declan Sinclair for three points. Well, it might just have enough. That's excellent from Sinclair. Great, great kick from the big fella. Now they must take this kick off, secure it, and look after the ball. Okay. It'll pick at close quarters from Tunbridge. They can afford to play a bit of keep ball. This is what they, they've got to do. Eat, eat the clock. Referee Pierce. But look after little, it. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you there. Pierce just having a little look at the watch as Orchard tries to set them going. Olabuye, I haven't really seen him with much open ground in front of him, but now he's got some and he cuts back in field. Good tackle and he's passed it away to a Tunbridge player. Devani. Kicks it upfield, it's still not gone out. Can't take your eyes off this, Bedford coming forward now. Popped up for Rogers. Bedford have got numbers out here on the right, Tunbridge have got a spread. They've only got two defence if they can get it wide enough. Drift defence is beginning to come, Orchard, Finch, Dingwall, straightens. Dingwall still going, steps inside, Olabuye. There was a hand from Tunbridge, the referee says that he's playing a penalty. Dalton, Johnson, suddenly Tunbridge looking on the ropes here if Bedford can find a way through. Whoa. What a gripping end to this we're having, Finch. Tunbridge holding on here because time must nearly be up if it isn't already. Johnson, Rogers, tackle from Sporforth. <laughs> Sets it back, we come back for the penalty. Referee's keeping his cards in his pocket so far this game. Connor Finch asking him the question. They tap and go, there is no time for the line. Hicks with the run. No, but it's loose. 
and it's gone forward and surely that is it now for Bedford. Petrosi goes burrowing for it. I think they've turned it over. Okay, they might have turned it over, but I imagine the knock-on advantage will still stand. Has he forgotten it? It is coming back, Sportforth into touch, and the referee blows the final whistle. Tunbridge School are the new winners of the NatWest Schools Champions Trophy. Bedford distraught, as you would understand. Side with Director of Sport and First uh, 15 coach Chris Morgan. First of all, incredible proper cup final, you must be very, very proud. Uh, yeah, an absolutely heroic effort. I think that's probably as close to being a professional rugby player as I'm sure many of these guys will get. Uh, an amazing experience and really proud of them all. Took a lot of patience as well. You had a lot of ball in the first half. The scores didn't necessarily go your way, but the boys kept their heads and, uh, well, a brilliant recovery. What did you say to them at half-time? Um, I can't really remember, but um, I think something along the lines of I think we had 10 opportunities to score in the first half. Uh, they had one and they took it, so I think it was about being, being patient in the red zone. Um, and they weren't committing many defenders, so I think the pick and go was a useful weapon. And Blaise Mott got man of the match, but brilliant performances, 1-15 to 15 once again. Uh, yeah, it, you know, this is very much a team effort. Um, the boys really played for each other, and today was about doing what they do week in, week out. Uh, and it's good to see Blaise... Um, achieve his potential on the big occasion and finally because I can tell you want to get back over to the boys incredible support from everyone who came down to watch today yeah absolutely amazing support really appreciated it some boys play rugby and have an interest uh, other boys there probably couldn't, couldn't uh, would have preferred to be in uh, lessons but uh, everybody got behind the, the team and it really galvanized the school a great occasion and, and a big thank you uh, to senior management for allowing the boys to, to miss the day Chris thank you very much go and enjoy the rest of the evening brilliant achievement well done uh, thank you thanks for and a big shout out to Graham Gales, my uh, co-coach. I heard that he was a good coach before the start of this season, uh, but I didn't realise he was this good. What's coming next? The last medal has been presented, and George Head, the skipper, is receiving the trophy, and he brings it forward. The 2016 NatWest Schools Cup champions trophy winners are Tunbridge School things first how does it feel to be a champion oh it's just, i'm just overcome with emotion at the at right right now the the whole game it, it was just a blur it was just it was unbelievable and start to finish it looked physical a real proper cup final yeah it was it was really tough i mean they ran at us with all we got uh, we managed to put them back on a few occasions so yeah really good fun great match well great fun a big smile on your face and you're clutching that man of the match jersey as well a big performance on the big stage how does that feel for you personally um yeah really good uh it's great i have my parents here watching so i just love to give everyone a good performance thank you very much and you certainly did that a little bit of an injury to the left hand do you think that'll keep you out for long uh no nah, it should be all right i think it's just stiffened up a bit once a bit of strapping and i'll be ready to go again and finally what about that brilliant tunbridge support yeah unbelievable from all the boys um, they just kept us going when, when we were camped on our line defending the cheering it just got us through it it was really brilliant well Blaze congratulations and uh, thank you very much thank you very much but that's it congratulations to Tunbridge they run out winners in the final against Bedford School by 17 points to 10 bye bye from all of us for now